Hello, beautiful. <laughs> yes, that includes you, but I don't want to be so forward. I do appreciate that you clicked on this video. When I said, hello, beautiful, please consider yourself spoken to. Um, I was actually really referring to my Phalaenopsis Schilleriana, who is in the spotlight again. This is an update, it's a care collab, an update on my part. At this time, we have some new channels that are joining in who were not there for last year's care collab. So, plenty of links in the description. Phalaenopsis Schilleriana being a much sought after and beloved Phalaenopsis species grown in collections in many, many environments many, many hemispheres. My apologies for my natural airflow today, but this video has to be filmed today because when this video airs, it's gonna be nasty. And I actually wanted to showcase her outside in some natural light. Right, update. Last year, if you don't know my video, I shall link it below, but very, very briefly, I was challenged by the fact that Phalaenopsis chilleriana leaves only seemed to stay in groups of three. When she was little, she had a few more, four, and those seedling leaves quickly dropped off. So my challenge from the year 2021 to 2022 was to see if I could not make her hold on to more leaves because they're so beautiful. What I did was reduce the pH to 5.5 5.6, especially when I gave her calcium and magnesium. Chilleriana like it a little bit more acidic, and I figured if I give her a little bit more calcium magnesium, it might increase my chances for her to be holding on to her structures instead of dumping them. Because I have noticed that the minute that Phalaenopsis chilleriana starts to produce some roots, something else tends to give, and that is when she starts absorbing her oldest leaves. Oldest is relative because these leaves on the back here, especially this one, if I would say this one is the oldest, this is a 2020 leaf. This leaf and this leaf are 2021 leaves. Excuse you. This one, meanwhile, is still growing. So you see, there is no aging of the leaves on my orchid, and that was my aim to see if I could push that a little bit. Meanwhile, it didn't work. She's healthy, she's doing well. I may need to just accept that this orchid, being the species that she is, has the tendency of just holding on to three structures and then starts to bloom out into beautiful blooms. Now, last year as well, I was moaning a little bit about how small my blooms were in comparison to the previous year, 2020. These are a little bit bigger than last year even when they open, even though they open a little bit smaller and as they age, they also start to increase in size. So at least that was corrected. My blooms are already a little bit bigger than they were in the blooming last year where I was moaning about it. I also have a nicer blooming now. I have some branching in the back. I'm gonna try and do this super carefully. I have a branch also blooming. So my bloom count has increased. If I cannot hold on to structures by reducing the pH when it comes to a calcium magnesium application, that doesn't matter. I have become so accustomed now to reduce her pH to 5.5, 5.6, that I am going to continue to do that. Creating the habit was hard enough. <laughs> now that I've gotten into the rhythm, I will not stop. Clearly, it hasn't done the orchid any harm. If you're new to my channel and you're watching a video of mine for the first time, I grow the majority of my orchids in LECA and self-watering. The same with my Phalaenopsis chilleriana. I also usually pH at around 6.3, 6.0. I sometimes go down as low as 5.8. I have never gone into any of my other pots as low as 5.5, 5.6, but you know, for the sake of getting to know an orchid a little bit better, for the sake of the Phalaenopsis chilleriana and understanding if there's a chance to override the natural need to drop old structures just because the roots are growing, this one gets 5.5, 5.6. When it comes to supplementing with calcium and magnesium, throughout the fertilizing process, I am sticking around 5.8 and 6.0. She has grown some beautiful roots over the course of the past 12 months. 
and they were extending amazingly throughout the entire winter with beautiful burgundy root tips. The minute she started on her spike, it was like, look, I can't do everything all at once. I will spike and the roots have stopped. But in the pot, there's a lot of activity. Now, another thing about this orchid is there are two kinds or, well, several kinds of Schilleriana species. Mine is from the Philippines, from the island of Luzon. We also have another Phalaenopsis Schilleriana species in Malaysia. Those structures are much, much longer. You can see that my mottling is a little bit more subdued. It's still pretty nonetheless, but the ones from Malaysia get much, much longer leaves. They have a much deeper richness about them as well, which really brings the mottling to the forefront. So keep that in mind if you're on the market for a Schilleriana or you're not entirely sure why yours is staying a little bit smaller. The Philippine version is a little bit on the smaller side. The fragrance is the same though, doesn't matter which of the two you've got. This is a gorgeous rose fragrance. You would need a little bit more warmth. You don't need sun on this orchid, but a little bit more warmth brings the fragrance out. As long as the air is cool, nah, there's not really much going on. The minute it gets a little warmer now, as you can see, the sun is sort of blinding the blooms out a little bit. But now she is starting to smell like that gorgeous bush of roses. And it is a strong fragrance. It's as if you're walking into the perimeter of a rose garden. You can then go and smell all the individual roses and appreciate their individual unique fragrances. But that beautiful rose, heady rose smell, as you walk into a rose garden, and that is what the Schilleriana smells like. And it was just a touch of a little bit of sun that has just made that happen. She's gorgeous, and I'm really sorry that the sun and the white facade is blocking all of this out because, yeah, her colors are pretty. But without the sun, there is no crystalline sparkle either. Fantastic little orchid. She was sent to me by mistake. I would not have a Phalaenopsis Schilleriana if the nursery hadn't made a mistake. My order said Catlia Schilleriana. <laughs> I got a Phalaenopsis Schilleriana instead. Oh well, I would have been quite happy to return her and send her back and get my Catlia Schilleriana, but the nursery was kind enough to say, no, 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 you keep her will send you a Cattleya Schilleriana, which hasn't bloomed for me. But anyway, that is not what we're talking about today. So yeah, right now her fertilizer regime is well and truly underway. During the past winter, I have also kept up with her fertilizer. It was around 160 parts per million. And I'm gonna keep that going throughout the summer because this leaf here has yet to come to full size. I hope that you enjoyed this update. Lots more channels to go and have a look-see compared to our Care Collab last year. I am pleased that at least I got some results after having to go through the headache of changing my pH for a single orchid in my collection. <laughs> I got bigger blooms and I learned something new about her. Thank you so much for your time coming over and having a look-see at my Schilleriana 2022. We appreciate your company and we wish you a beautiful day. On one condition though. <laughs> that you stay safe. We'd love to see you in the next video. Take care, bye.